It's my huge privilege today uh, to be able to welcome you to the celebration of the life and the homegoing of Dylan Paul Cope. Of course, you're all here because you knew him and loved him, got a kick out of him. I'd like to thank Mike and probably Sean for putting that together. That was an incredible gift. Thank you so much. Amazing to, to laugh for a minute, see some of the craziness, and what a wonderful family that God brought you into. And uh, by the way, I'm Steve Andrews and part of Kensington, and of course many of you have suffered under my coaching or my cheering at your games, but there's something incredible today that I just want to acknowledge as we begin, because... Um, I think most of us, as we go through life, you kind of, you kind of measure your days, uh, best days and worst days. And in the decades that I've lived in this city, uh, this is one of the hardest of my life. I had the privilege of meeting Dylan a couple of weeks before the leukemia returned. In fact, Kevin and I were helping Mr. Coach Patton coach the... Uh, a little league team, and I noticed that, that uh, Dylan had a big bruise on his leg and in typical, insensitive, clod-like fashion, made some comment about it. He just, as you know, Dylan shrugged it off, went out and took batting practice. And Kevin pulled me aside, and, and it was that point, said, we think that uh, maybe the leukemia has returned. And so, like all of you, I got this ringside seat to see an amazing family and an amazing community. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. I never thought I would live in Detroit all my life. I didn't know that I would be sentenced to life in Detroit. But I did not know what an incredible community that he would be in. And as Dave and Kevin and Kim and I were talking just a couple days ago, I wanted just to kind of set the parameters for some things that are going to happen in the next little while. One is I'm going to invite people to share memories and remembrances of stories of Dylan in a few minutes. I'd love for you to think about maybe joining me in doing with that because all of us who knew him and knew the Cope family have some pretty great memories. Memories of courage and strength along the way. But as we, as we kind of share through this day, I just want to share a couple thoughts from Kevin and Kim that they were very adamant about they wanted you to know today that they in no way have blamed God for this journey. It's pretty important that they wanted. I mean, that was absolutely critical. They wanted a miracle. They wanted God to do a miracle in Dylan's life and to heal him. But they recognized that they live like we all live in a fallen world. Listen, we live in a world that's broken, where there's, uh, there's brokenness and there's, there's uh, pain and there's disease. As a follower of Jesus, it's clear, the Bible is crystal clear, it's a result of our fall. It's a result that we've, uh, we've turned our back on God. That's the whole point of Jesus coming. And yet, within this community has been an incredible experience of people in the midst of this, turning their hearts to Christ and turning their hearts to to each other. And the other thing Kevin and Kim wanted you to know as they were praying for just God's greater glory and Dylan's healing is that they would want you to know that God did not give him this disease. This disease is a result of the brokenness of this world. But what they did want you to know that God did give Dylan the perfect family to live in, perfectly designed with his mother and father, his brothers and his boatload of cousins and aunts and uncles. God put him in an incredible sense of family, but he also put him in a great community. I'm, I'll be 53 years old this week, and I have rarely seen, when a young man was sick or a young woman was sick, I've never rarely seen a group of men and women, young men and women who were so mature to rally around him in love and friendship and to care for him in a way that he never felt abandoned by his friends. Is that right? And just this support. And I have witnessed that 
And I want to say, I want to say to you, you students, that you guys are awesome. You have unbelievable, you've been an unbelievable blessing, and it, it, it speaks to me that for the rest of your lives, that you could be a blessing of love, of God's love and compassion for this world, that this was just the beginning moment where you realized you had so much to give to other people, and that you would not let this moment rob you of the incredible gift that you have to give, that Dylan felt, that we all felt and saw in this community. And so, as we just kind of begin this day, we wanted just to focus you, knowing that we're here to celebrate God's faithfulness. Yes, I mean, for Kim, and for Kevin, for Mike, and Sean, for many of you, this will be a day that you'll never forget. I mean, long after we forgot who, who made all state, or what the one lo win loss record of a team was. What's really interesting, and I know this now because I've lived a long time, is you'll remember Dylan. And you remember the way he lived and the way he faced adversity. And, you'll, and that will inspire us all to live our lives for God and live our lives differently. And so we're going to have a time of, of sharing and celebration, and we're all going to get a chance to share a thought or two. But as we begin this, we just wanted to share a scripture and a song to start off the service. Uh, I want to invite Caleb Cope Martin, Dylan's 16-year-old cousin, to share one of Dylan's favorite passages. And he's nervous, so you can welcome him up. Welcome him up. Come on, buddy. It'd be hard to describe how much this verse meant to Dylan. Well, like you said, this is uh, one of Dylan's favorite verses in Scripture. It's uh, Joshua 1 9. And uh, he memorized it and said it out loud to give himself strength. Uh, and it reads Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go.